So in the previous lesson, we learned that any charge, say Q0, placed in an electric field produced by another charge Q has certain potential energy associated with it or more accurately associated with the system of charges Q and Q0. In this lesson, we learn three things. What really is electric potential? How can we measure electric potential? And finally, solve a problem or numerical to strengthen our understanding of the lesson. Well, electric potential or more often shortened to potential is nothing but the potential energy measured per unit charge. The symbol we use to represent it is V and it equals U divided by Q naught. And if you go ahead and put U equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon Q Q naught upon R, what you can see is that the charge Q naught suddenly vanishes from this definition. So a very important piece of information that you can absorb right off the bat is that the potential at a point depends only on the charge that creates a field. So let us get into understanding this a little deeper and at the end of the lesson, we will do a practice problem that will strengthen our understanding of what I will teach you now. So stay with me till the end. But first things first, and we can see in the formula that like potential energy, potential at a point is also a scalar quantity, which I think is good news because it really saves us the trouble of dealing with vectors and the resolution. You can also see the units of electric potential are joules per coulomb or a volt that is the SI unit. And you must know that it was named after the great Italian scientist Alessandro Volta. So we write 1 V is equal to 1 volt, which is equal to 1 joule per coulomb. So let us use this equation that connects work done in moving a charge Q0 from A to B as change in the potential energy and write it for a unit charge. And what we need to do is just divide both sides by Q0. And then we can see that the left side now gives the work done per unit charge instead of work done in moving the full charge Q0 from A to B. And likewise, the right hand side gives the change in potential energy for a unit charge if it moves from A to B. And if we expand the right hand side a little, what we get is this expression. And we go ahead and write this as minus VB minus VA that equals VA minus VB. So VA and VB become your potential energy per unit charge at A and B respectively. And in a more formal way, we say that the electric potential at A is VA and at B is VB. So another way of expressing the idea of potential is by saying that if a force moves a unit charge from A to B, then the work done by the force is equal to the difference of potential at A and potential at B. So having understood what potential is, the next obvious question is how do we measure it? Well, expanding the definition of potential as V is equal to potential energy per unit charge, we can write this as 1 upon 4 pi epsilon Q Q naught upon R into 1 by Q naught. And you see that the Q naught value gets eliminated from the expression for potential V. What this tells us is that one potential exists at a point that may be at a distance r from charge q whether you have a charge here or not number two potential exists all around charge q at any distance r and number three this potential is positive everywhere if charge q is positive and negative everywhere if it is negative now if you have more than one charge and you are asked to find potential at a point, then all you need to do is find potential due to each charge as if the other charges are not present and then sum them up algebraically. So the expression you get for measuring potential due to several charges is this 
where Ri is the distance of the ith charge from where potential is being measured. So one quick observation you can make is that the potential at infinity would be zero because the moment you put R is equal to infinity, this expression becomes zero. The same would be true for this equation as well if you put all R values as infinity. Now, let us say that we are given the electric field value and are asked to find potential difference between points A and B or VA minus VB. So how we should go about approaching this derivation is that we take a test charge Q0 and place it at a point A and then let it move from A to B under the influence of field. Then we can say that the work done when it moves from A to B is WAB is equal to integral of F dot DL integrated between A and B. But then force here is the product of Q0 and the E value. So let us substitute E Q0 for F and then if we divide both sides by Q0 and compare with the equation derived earlier, we can say that VA minus VB is equal to integral of E dot DL integrated between A and B which can further be written as this. So this is a standard formula we use for finding potential difference between two points when the E value is available to us. Well, I think just knowing the derivation and memorizing the formula is not good enough and we should try to interpret this equation and make a little more sense out of it. So let us say that this integration turns out to be a positive value. Then we can say that the electric field has done positive work on the test charge as it moves from A to B. And we know when positive work is done, the velocity of the charge goes up and therefore its kinetic energy as well. And when the kinetic energy increases, we also know that the potential energy must decrease. Hence, the potential energy per unit charge should also decrease. So we can say that VA is more than VB or VA minus VB is positive or there exists a positive potential difference between the two points A and B. Let us understand this better by taking a positive charge station here that creates a field E like this. Then we can say that the potential at any point is V equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon times Q by R and we can clearly see that this expression will be positive for all R values and if you move away from the charge, this V value reduces because you see this guy R is increasing thereby reducing the V value. So as you move in the direction of electric field E, the value V keeps reducing and very obviously if you are moving in the direction opposite E, the V value keeps increasing because R keeps reducing making this expression larger. Well, let us see what happens if we have a negative charge here instead of positive. The direction of E will now be this and the V value would become negative at any distance R because now we have a minus Q here. So if you now moved away from the charge, the V value will become larger because it becomes less negative and as you move in the direction of the field, towards the charge, the V value becomes smaller because it becomes more negative. So you see, irrespective of the charge being negative or positive, what you should remember is that if you move in the direction of the field, the potential or V value will always reduce and if you move opposite the direction of E, the potential will always increase. So my suggestion is that as we move ahead, you must think through all this at each step and imagine visually as to what is happening under various situations and you will see it will bring a lot of clarity as you progress through this topic. 
and now i would like to pose a question to you and that is what external force would be required to move a unit test charge from point b to a well if you think logically you can see that this charge is getting pushed by charge q and if you put enough external force to counter the force due to electric field of this charge you should be able to move the unit charge from b to a and this external force should be equal in magnitude to e but opposite in sign that is minus e we can then say that the work done to move unit charge from b to a is integral of minus e dot dl integrated between b and a but then you can write this expression like this also all we have done is reverse the limit and taken minus of this expression so mathematically both are the same but then you can see that this is nothing but the difference in potential va minus vb that we derived earlier so an alternate way of expressing difference in potential between a and b is to say that it is a work done by an external force in moving the charge from b to a against the force of electric field e and now finally we come to the idea of electron volts as a unit of energy which actually is quite simple so the concept is that the value of charge on an electron can be used to define a unit of energy so if you use the equation u a minus u b is equal to q times v a minus v b or we simply write this as v a b then if you take the value of charge q equal to that of an electron that is 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and we take the potential difference as 1 volt between a and b then the change in potential energy of this electron as we move it from a to b would equal 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 joules and we define this value as equal to 1 electron volt or in short 1 ev so let me restate what i just said that is if a particle of charge e moves through a potential difference of 1 volt the change in potential energy is equal to 1 electron volt and if the charge is some multiple of e say n e the change in potential energy will be simply n e times the change in potential difference between the two points so let us close this lesson with a practice problem that will try to cover the concepts we learned in this lesson and cement your understanding so the question is around a charge that is a proton displaced from point a to point b by 0.5 meters in a linear accelerator which means it moves in a straight line and it is also known that the electric field e is uniform along this line and has a magnitude of 1.5 into 10 to the power 7 volts per meter in the direction from a to b so the question is one what is the force experienced by the proton Two, what is the work done by the field in moving the charge? And three, what is the potential difference V A minus V B? Okay, so the first question is, what is the force on the proton? Well, that is quite simple, and we can say that the force is equal to Q times E, and is in the same direction as the electric field, because we know that the electric field direction is always determined by putting a positive discharge, and since proton is also a positive charge. the force on it would also be in the direction of the field and would equal 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb into 1.5 into 10 to the power 7 newton per coulomb that equals 2.4 into 10 to the power minus 12 newtons the next question is what is the work done between a and b well since the force is constant and acting in the direction of the displacement we simply put w from a to b is equal to force into displacement which equals 
2.4 into 10 to the power minus 12 Newton into 0 0.5 meter, which if you calculate comes to about 7.5 into 10 to the power 6 electron volts, which equals 7.5 million electron volts. So what else can we conclude here? Well, we can say that since the direction of the force and the displacement is same, the work done by the field on the charge is positive and if the work done is positive, the kinetic energy of the proton has to go up and if the kinetic energy goes up, the potential energy must go down and if the potential energy goes down, what it means is, and I'll stop for five seconds for you to think. The answer is, if the potential energy goes down, the proton has moved from a region of high potential to a region of low potential. So VA must be greater than VB or VA minus VB should be a positive value. So let us go ahead and find the value of potential difference VA minus VB. So we know that the potential difference is equal to the work done between A and B per unit charge. That means VA minus VB is equal to work done between A and B divided by Q. And if you do these calculations, it comes to 7.5 million volts. And we see that VA minus VB indeed is a positive value we had concluded earlier. So let us try to verify this answer in another way. And that is by using the equation VA minus VB is equal to integral of E cos alpha dl integrated between A and B. And since we know that angle alpha in this case or in this question between E and displacement is always zero, since they're always parallel, we can say that cos alpha is one. So this therefore equals E integral dl. And we know that integral of dl from A to B is nothing but D itself. So we go ahead and put the values and what we get is VA minus VB is equal to ED, which equals 7.5 into 10 to the power 6 volts. That, of course, turned out to be the same answer as we calculated before.